Hello, hello. I am the Sammy Mad News, also known as Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Michelle, that's where S A M I comes from, Sammy. Um, I have already done a little bit of my makeup. This is the second take on this because the first one I got all confused. So, um, we're going to talk about this lady right here who doesn't actually look like this. Pocahontas, the lovely and talented Pocahontas. Um, and her life. I know last time that I, I said I was going to talk about my nation, but I think this is something that a lot of people will want to talk about because she's such an iconic figure and she's she's in a Disney movie, for goodness sakes. That means she's very important. I think. I don't know. I always thought she was. And, and in popular culture, she's portrayed about a thousand different ways and stuff. And she's um, been in, her character's been portrayed in about 500,000 movies and things like that. So let's talk about her while I'm trying to put on my mascara without making mascara face. Even though it's probably a better idea that I do because sometimes I run, um, I end up with mascara on my eyebrows. How do you do that? That takes like, woo! <laughs> like you have to move like that. No. Anyway. Okay. So... Pocahontas actually was born, they say around 1596. They're not sure because they didn't have birth records back then um, among the natives. She was born to an unknown woman who very well she may have been named after, but it was an unknown woman. Pal Hutton, her father, had multiple uh, wives and um, this was probably his first wife. Um, but she would be of like lowly status and then she'd be able to go back to her own people or whatever. And she probably would have been a very big part of, uh, Pocahontas's life, but it's, uh, suggested that she actually died in, uh, childbirth, which is very sad. It sucks. Like, you know, people need their mom. Um, but she had several surrogate mothers, of course, within the tribe. And so she was well taken care of. Now she was also favored by her father. Sometimes native fathers were not all that present, especially if they were of high status because they had about 5,000 things to do and you can't be bothered with your kids, right? No, Powhatan was a family man and he very much loved Pocahontas. He actually like in their tribes, and this might be true in other tribes, but um, they had private and secret names, and she was presented to colon uh, the colonizers as um, Pocahontas, but at her actual secret name, which um, was heard by accident, was either Mo Matawaka or Mataoka. <laughs> I, I keep mispronouncing it, and I'm probably going to. These are Algonquin words, and I'm, I was never taught Algonquin. It would be fun to learn. I like learning languages. Um, but this is not one that I'm familiar with. So um, I could just do my hair since I'm, like, kind of done with my makeup. But I don't want to get up again because <laughs> then I'd have to raise that up. But we'll just... We'll go with what it is. I don't want to put too much crap on my face because eventually I'm going to take it all up and I'm going in the sun and I am going to bake until I please the ancestors. Just kidding. They don't care what color you are. Um, so long as you honor them and are like, hey, this is how things were. Things are, this is how things are going to be. And don't be a jerk. Um, so, I am going to put a little bit here so people can see my lovely high cheekbones that reach almost up into my eyebrows. Um, so, she was born around 1596. She used to hang out in Jamestown, actually. And this is Jamestown, Virginia, just like the movie. Um, she used to hang out there as a kid and run around with the other kids. And she actually... She was, uh, 
she was a feisty little one. She um, actually was able to get little boys to like run errands for her. And um, the way it was described is like she almost like played wheelbarrow with them, which is hilarious. Um, she was able to boss these little boys around. Um, she was naked as a jaybird often, and um, with I mean, you're you know. Why need clothes? Who needs that? That's just nonsense. I mean, I like clothes, but if you want to be a nudist and it's part of your culture, go for it. I believe in you. I stay clothed for several reasons. As Chandler Bing would say, when I go outside without pants, they throw garbage at me. <laughs> it's not very nice. Don't throw garbage at people. Just because they're just because they're naked, that's not nice. I'm trying to just touch up some of this crap because some of it looks really nasty and weird and messy. So, um, she used to hang around with boys and stuff like that. Well, in 1607, um, John Smith and his little friends came, o came over to try and gain more land, more resources, and learn how to farm on the land. They already had people there who uh, were already interacting with the natives and they thought that they could negotiate and or take what they wanted. So um, John Smith came over and he was not really a militant dude. In fact, he wasn't even very smart. Um, but um, he was... Um, captured while um, he was exploring some areas around uh, Virginia and he um, was taken captive in, I think it was 1608, 1608, I think. Um, and during his capture, he, it was said that he there was a great feast and he actually was able to talk to Powhatan. Um, and he ended up being able to meet uh, Pocahontas, and he said that she was, um, originally, he had written letters to Queen Anne of England, um, quite a lot. I think um, Queen Anne liked learning about the natives and stuff, and the idea of a native princess probably um, really just delighted her in hearing stories about this little playful little bubbly kid um, who wasn't bound by the uh, niceties and you know the kind of you have to be super proper and stuff like that is royalty in England well the idea of native royalty where you get to do whatever you want was probably uh, very enticing to her so he would often write to her and in one of his writings he said that she was about 10 but after she died he just he wrote later that she was about probably about 12 or 13, which makes more sense considering the timeline. Um, and then he um, talks about his in his capture, the famous story that he was saved by Pocahontas when he was sentenced to death and was about to be bludgeoned, um, that there were two rocks and they were going to stone his brain. And that she stepped in and covered his body. And she's, uh, she said, no, you're not allowed to do that. And uh, it's actually widely disputed. And he's known, actually, later as quite the embellisher. He liked to embellish how important he was to other settlers. And he would very much do this to Native Americans because they... They didn't know where he came from. They just know he was an Englishman and he was supposedly very well dressed and stuff. And by the way, he was much older than people um, portray him as, especially in the Disney movie. He was not the same age as Pocahontas by any stretch of the imagination. He was he was very, very much an older man. He was probably in his mid 40s. And um, so he, uh, yeah, he... he <laughs> And there was no love story. Nothing. In 1609, he uh, 
was injured in uh, some hostilities between the natives and the Anglos, and he returns to England. Um, and that was kind of the last time that she saw him when she was a kid. She later saw him, but we'll get to that. Um, in 1613, there were even oh, hostilities became worse, and she uh, and Pocahontas was actually uh, captured and uh, tricked into going onto a ship. She already trusted these people. Like, yes, there were hostilities and stuff, but she grew up around them. She had no reason to distrust them, um, really, because she thought she had made friends. So she is tricked onto a boat and was held for ransom and because the Anglos wanted their guns back. They wanted like resources and things that like that that were taken during uh, the war. Um, and it was known as the first Anglo native war. Um, and that was in, like I said, 1613. And she met a man during this time named Alexander Whitaker, who helped her better her English because, you know, growing up around a group of people, you're going to kind of pick up their language. And, but he helped her better her English and introduced her to Christianity, which she converted to um, very shortly thereafter and adopted the name Re Rebecca. Now, she was very, very serious about her name because, I mean, first of all, she had three already. And um, she was very purposeful about choosing the name Rebecca, which means friends of uh, friend of God. Um, and she also met John Rolfe and was married to him in April of 1614. And uh, John Rolfe was said to be very much in love with her. Now, you have to remember and realize that um, she was not actually a great beauty. She was not this just, like, breathtaking, long hair. She probably had long hair, but she, was, she wasn't what you, you picture when you think Disney princess, whatever. No, she was, she was kind of average looking and stuff like that. She probably still makes, uh, she probably still shames me, but she was, uh, she was pretty great. Uh, personality-wise, she was extremely charismatic, as I said, and she was very, very smart, and he just, he adored her, and he wrote several letters about how much he cared about her and how much he loved her. He was a very uh, rich toba tobacco planter um, there in Virginia, and um, she agreed to marry him but I think it was like a diplomatic move because if you're married to a rich English dude, you can also like bring resources and report back to your own people and stuff. And I think she's, I know that she still loved her heritage. She still loved her people, but she felt betrayed. And so she turned her back on it, but you can never really turn your back on your own heritage. Um, and I, I still think it was a diplomatic move to stop the, hostilities and stuff like that because they were still going on at this time she just wasn't a um she she wasn't considered a a person who was uh, she wasn't considered a, you know a prisoner anymore um now there's a thought that um that and this is widely believed by natives that while she was in captivity before she married John Rolfe she was uh, raped and um, but that's not really how they treated her they treated her like she was a guest honestly she knew she was in captivity but she was really a you know, they treated her like a guest um, and there's the Matapone that say that before all of this happened she was actually married to now you'll remember this name Kokoam, who was kind of a warrior and a, cap a war captain. And it's possible that they had a baby together and that she was, after she was taken into captivity, she wasn't able to be around her baby. And, and he was killed 
during the war. So in 1614, she was supposedly a widower, or a widow, <laughs> widower, um, and married to a widower named John Rolfe. Um, and we, we, we talked about that. <laughs> um, and she uh, went, to, he, like I said, he was very much in love with her. And she decided to go with him. In 1616, she went to England. And they, re, they didn't really revere her as a princess, but she was treated very well. Um, and she was also seen as kind of a, dip, a diplomat to kind of explain, you know, if you're going to talk to them, this is what you need to do. Um, she was kind of a cultural interpreter as how to interact with natives. Some people say that she was a traitor because she did this, but I think she already felt betrayed. So I'm going to do what you do to me. <laughs> um, she had... While she was living in uh, Virginia, right before she left, she had a son named Thomas Rolfe, and um, he is—he ended up surviving. She, uh, there's, this is kind of sad. Like a year later, after she gets into England or whatever, she, uh, there are a few ideas on how she died, but two of them are that she died of tuberculosis right before she was going to go back to Virginia and possibly reunite with her people. Um, she either contracted tuberculosis or I find this even more sad because it took out so many natives, but it was um, during, you know, the whole of native, native and uh, Anglo history. She very well easily could have been taken out by smallpox. That's another idea that they had. Um, she was survived by um, her son, Thomas, and um, he later had descendants and descendants and descendants, and those are known now as the Mataponi. And um, they keep her memory alive. She died at... Uh, I think it was St. George's um, Cathedral, but they wanted they wanted to uh, bury her there um, and everything. But it, it, in uh, England, but she died at Gravesend, and her body was buried there. Um, and uh, it was. It's a sad thing because she didn't live very long. She was probably about 24 or 25 when she died. Um, but there was so much and she was so well loved and everything. And this is the first time we really see the idea of native royalty in American history. Um, even though that's not really a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> um, it's a joke, really natives like we have chief's blood but we don't really have princesses like if you go to a powwow they might mention a princess or something like that but i really doubt it has anything to do with uh chief's blood or anything i think it's just look she's a princess look how pretty she her, her regalia is and how well she dances and stuff like that i think it has more to do with that than anything else um she is loved the world over um and there's so many writings about her and there will continue to be so many writings about her um, because I think that natives really need not only a hero, but a, a female hero. It's so like, I think people are enticed by the idea of a female hero because we live in a patriarchal society and much of the world does. So when you have this beautiful icon and a very, in some ways, mysterious and exotic um, culture, I think that's really important to people um, because they want to see their heroes, especially if you're native. Like when I was a kid, I ran around in Pocahontas stuff all the time until I heard her real story and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> Well, that's not good. I mean, I can still love her and stuff, and I still wear this, and my aunt calls me Pocahontas. But 
you know, you gotta, you gotta keep in reality and reality in mind and say, you know, her, her story is not a fairy tale. There's tragedy there. There's a lot of interesting things and like history that has whitewashed her. And sometimes in American history class, they'll talk about her for like two seconds and then not bring her up ever again. And people are like, why aren't you talking about her? Um, because, you know, we saw a movie about her. <laughs> We've seen several movies about her. Why don't we talk to her about Well, they didn't do their homework. And they don't want to either destroy the illusion. Or they know they're going to end up whitewashing it. And somebody like me is going to speak up. Um, this message has been brought to you by myself in extra free time um because it's friday and i don't have a darn thing to do today other than walk Seamus, who is very bored underneath my feet it was a pleasure to see you today treat everybody right remember that there are several missing and murdered indigenous women uh that need to be discovered and uh the movement mmiw um is dedicated to uh, finding these women and rescuing them. Um, so if you want to get in touch with anybody that you want to, if you think that you can help in any way, uh, please uh, find a way to contact them. I wish I had their contact stuff so I could put it in the description, but I don't. So if they're missing and captured women that you don't think are going to turn out like Pocahontas, and many of them don't, um, please try and get to your authorities or tribal authorities or something and really help find them because it's a, it's really an epi epidemic that people don't pay attention to because there's so much other stuff going on in the world and people don't bring up uh, these these women in uh, on the news. It just doesn't happen for whatever reason. And uh, yeah, so... Save Native women, woo, and uh, treat each other right. Have a good day. Everybody is equal, and uh, learn to paint with all the colors of the wind. I got lip gloss on me.